Please let me in grandma's house. Early one winter morning, I opened the door to get the newspaper and couldn't believe my eyes. My five-year-old grandson was shivering in the yard, hugging his knees. I quickly invited him inside and warmed him up. Where are your mom and dad? They went to Hawaii with my sister. They said I would be a nuisance. I was shaking with anger at the shocking words that came out of my grandson's mouth after his body stopped shaking. Why didn't they take my grandson with them? And what were they thinking, leaving him out in the cold like this? I swore to show my son and daughter-in-law hell for their terrible treatment. My name is Skylar, and I'm 58 years old. I'm still working as a nurse. I lost my husband to illness early on, so I raised my only son, Austin, on my own. I worked hard to make sure he had everything he needed and didn't feel miserable because he only had one parent. I couldn't give him as much attention as I wanted because I was so busy, so I gave him everything he wanted. As a result, Austin was a little selfish and spoiled, which worried me. However, six years ago, he got married and became a wonderful father to his five-year-old son William and four-year-old daughter Isabella. His wife Abigail is a bit flashy, but she gets along well with Austin. Also, my two grandchildren are so cute that I can't help but love them. My son's family lives about a 10-minute walk away, and I thought I'd watch over them without interfering too much. We've maintained a good distance, so our relationship has been good. As a nurse, I have some savings and a decent income, so I've given them plenty of gifts and assistance at important times. As a result, I sometimes feel like my son and his family are taking advantage of me, but raising children is expensive, so I've overlooked some things. However, there was one thing that I couldn't help but worry about. It was the difference in attitude towards my son's children, William and Isabella. Especially Abigail had been saying that she wanted a girl even before she got married, and it seemed that she was only fond of my granddaughter. It seems that she wants to make Isabella an idol, so she invests in her, such as dance, piano, and English, and lets her do anything. Isabella is good at everything. She's my proud daughter. She praised only her daughter regardless of whether William was present or not. On the other hand, my grandson, who seems to want to attend a soccer classroom since watching the World Cup, has become completely fond of soccer. Hey, Abigail. William seems to want to learn soccer. Why don't you let him go to class? Oh, that's impossible for him. It's a waste of time and money. She even said, It's a waste of money. I couldn't take it anymore and consulted my son. It's about William, but why don't you let him learn something? I'll help too. No, he can't do it, so it's okay. I offered to help with my grandson's lessons to Austin, but he refused. My son and daughter-in-law say William can't do anything but he's a smart kid who speaks quickly. He also loves to draw, and his drawings are charming in terms of color and composition, and are popular with young nurses at work. Please take a look at William's painting too. Even my colleagues at work are fans of his work. Ha! Huh. It's probably not a big deal anyway. Paintings are useless, aren't they? My son and daughter-in-law laughed at William's paintings without even looking at them. In addition, while Isabella always wears cute clothes, my grandson always wears worn-out clothes that are too small for him. Isabella has a lot of clothes. Should we go buy new clothes for William too? We buy clothes for him too. But boys' clothes are all the same, and girls' clothes are glamorous so there's nothing we can do. I was raising my children and thinking the same thing, so I was strangely convinced and couldn't say anything more. For me, 
both of them are important grandchildren. I tried to treat them equally, but my son and daughter-in-law only loved Isabella, so I kept an eye on William. As a result, my grandson also adored me, and he sometimes stayed at my house alone. Would Isabella like to stay at Grandma's house too? My granddaughter immediately replied, I want to go. But my daughter-in-law immediately raised her eyebrows. No, Isabella. What if something happens? The siblings got along well, so my granddaughter wanted to stay over, but she was never allowed by my son and daughter-in-law. On another day, when I was visiting their house. But raising children really costs a lot of money, doesn't it? Yes, but we'll manage. And I haven't told you yet, but I'm saving a little bit of money for William and Isabella. In fact, I had been saving money since they were born, and I intended to give it to my grandchildren when the time came. They shouldn't have relied on this, and I didn't intend to tell my son and daughter-in-law yet, but I accidentally let it slip out in response to Austin's weak statement. Then my son's eyes lit up. What? Is that true? Then just give me William's cash card so I can keep it for emergencies. But it's only for my grandchildren, and I can't give it to you yet. What the hell? There are times when I need it now. Just give it to me. I reluctantly gave him the cash card because of my son's forceful demand. I hope everything will be okay. And maybe this will prevent William from having a hard time. I hoped for the best and decided to keep an eye on the situation. But I never imagined that this card would put my grandson in even more trouble. It happened one early winter morning. When I opened the door to get the morning paper, I was shocked beyond words. My grandson was huddled in the snow, shivering with his knees hugged to his chest. William? What happened? My grandson slowly raised his head in response to my scream-like voice, but his eyes were vacant and his lips were blue. Please let me in Grandma's house. I thought I had to act quickly to my grandson's faint voice, so I picked him up and hurried him into the house. I immediately turned up the heat, wrapped William in a blanket, and gave him a warm cup of cocoa. Finally, his body stopped shaking and he calmed down. Where are your mom and dad? They went to Hawaii with my sister. I couldn't understand it right away. Hawaii? Didn't they take William with them? No. They said I would be a nuisance. Hawaii is not a distance that can be returned immediately. What are they thinking, leaving William alone? When did they go? About three days ago. I ate the bread they left me, but it disappeared quickly, and I was hungry, so I came to Grandma's house. Oh my. So William was alone all that time? My poor grandson spent the winter alone, without enough food or sleep. I immediately prepared breakfast and took my grandson to the dining table. He seemed quite hungry and was gobbling up the food while repeatedly saying delicious. I wish you had come here right away. Mom and Dad told me not to go to Grandma's house. But I couldn't stand it anymore. Sorry, Grandma. I was so angry at the terrible treatment that I felt like I was going crazy. William, you can relax now. You're fine if you're at Grandma's house. I decided that I couldn't leave my grandson to my son and daughter-in-law anymore and decided to protect him. Afterwards, I took William to the hospital because I was worried about his health, but he was not in critical condition, although he was a little weak. Although I was relieved, I couldn't understand what my son and daughter-in-law had done, and I couldn't forgive them. I had always been worried about it, but I wanted to believe in them. I can't believe how poor William was treated. I vowed to make them suffer the same way they had treated my grandson. 
I took a week off and decided to investigate various things because I wanted to be with William. Then, when I had some free time, I suddenly had a question. Come to think of it, what about the travel expenses for their trip to Hawaii? No way, I had a bad feeling, so I checked the balance of the cash card I had given to my son, which had decreased by about $10,000. I was convinced that it was used for the travel expenses, so I got angry and withdrew all the remaining balance so that William's important savings would not be used anymore. The account is empty now. I wonder what will happen. Then, I decided to consult someone to take custody of my grandson. Honestly, I was worried about whether William could live with someone other than his biological parents, but I was relieved that it seemed possible. Then, I received some amazing news that encouraged me even more. When William's account was emptied, Austin called with a furious tone after about two days. Hey! The cash card doesn't work. I can't withdraw money from the ATM either. What's going on? Oh, I needed money suddenly, so I withdrew some but there are still many years until William's enrollment, so I'll save again. It's okay, right? Well, I guess so. But please, transfer the money back as soon as possible. I was completely exasperated by how shameless he was. However, I managed to keep my urge to shout at him in check and covered up the situation without mentioning Hawaii. Then, my son hung up the phone without saying anything more. Three days later, my son and his wife returned home. Austin noticed that William was missing and immediately contacted me. I briefly told him that I was taking care of my grandson and promised to visit their house. On the day of the meeting, while William and Isabella were at the nursery, I visited my son's house with someone else. In the living room, the two of them were glaring at us with obvious bad moods. Hey, who's that person? Before that, I have something to ask. Why did you leave William alone and go on a trip? I also glared back at them without losing and pursued the matter. They didn't seem to be ashamed at all, grinning at each other when they saw my attitude. Besides, because you emptied the account, we couldn't go shopping or go to restaurants. Yeah, it was a terrible trip. They blamed me for ruining the trip. What are you talking about? It's your own fault, isn't it? Just use your own money. We can't do that. William is only five years old and requires attention. Besides, children's things belong to their parents, right? When I heard their selfish argument, I was exasperated because they didn't even take my five-year-old grandson with them. I can't believe you did such a terrible thing when you know he's only five years old. I can't forgive you. I said. William doesn't have any charm. If Isabella is there, it's enough. Both of them must be your children. Oh. Come on, you're so annoying. I never wanted William in the first place. Girls are cuter, and boys won't do anything good even if you raise them. The man who came with me spoke up against their attitude. My name is Henderson, an attorney. I've been watching you since earlier, and I can't feel any love for William from both of you. This is already a splendid case of child neglect. I had consulted with a lawyer beforehand to take legal custody of my grandson. He accompanied me to the meeting. I can't leave William to you anymore. I'll adopt him. Although my son and his wife seemed a little surprised by my sudden offer, they didn't seem to care much. It's okay. Yeah, do whatever you want. They agreed easily. I understand. To adopt a child under 15 years old, you need the parent's consent. 
Can you formally agree? So, with the lawyer present, my son and his wife formally agreed. It's okay. We have a daughter, and we're relieved to get rid of the trouble. Now we can focus on making Isabella an idol. My son nodded with a grin at his wife's words. What are you talking about? Children are not their parents' property, and you just want to do what you want with Isabella, don't you? Shut up. My son spat out the words with disgust. I've recorded all your statements so far, and I'll consult with the Child Consultation Center about your actions. Whatever, do it if you want. Abigail remained strong and unyielding. So I decided to mention my granddaughter, whom I love, here. I have to listen to Isabella's feelings, but I can't leave that child to you too, and I want to take her in. What are you talking about? Stop being so presumptuous. Then, my daughter-in-law, who had been calm until just now, glared at me like a devil. I love Isabella more than anyone else. That child doesn't want to be separated from us, right? Yeah, she'll never go to your place. My son and his wife were confident that their daughter would choose them. Well, is that really true? Isabella said she didn't want to dance or sing, didn't she? That's not true. Did you force Isabella? Who didn't want to, to do something? I wonder if that child will do what you want. When I spoke with a firm attitude, they suddenly panicked, perhaps because they realized that it applied to their daughter as well. So I decided to reveal my trump card to them. Oh, by the way, William's painting that you made fun of won the grand prize in a contest. He also received a prize of $3,000. Then, both of them suddenly widened their eyes. You're lying. There's no way he has that kind of talent. Actually, a young nurse colleague who liked William's painting consulted me about submitting his painting to a painting contest. So I applied, and he won the grand prize. His talent was not just our wishful thinking. William's painting, which my son and his wife had laughed at, was recognized by many people for his talent. Oh, and then, when my colleague posted William's other paintings on the internet, many people said they wanted to buy them. When I told them that, my son and his wife's faces were so funny that I can't stop laughing even now. Both of them had a surprised look on their faces. However, these shameless people did not back down. William is also our precious child. Yeah, families should live together. Two people who understood that the story of William's painting was true suddenly changed their attitude and said that they would raise their son after all. What are you saying now that all the procedures have been completed? The son and daughter-in-law, who were calmly reprimanded by the lawyer, regretted it. It's all your fault for loving Isabella so much. Huh? Didn't you say you wanted to go on a trip without William? They blamed each other and started quarreling in public. Stop it already! You must be very frustrated. William was a golden egg. And I won't help you two anymore in the future, so be prepared. Don't say that! I'll reflect on it, so please keep helping me. I'm also asking you. The shameless couple changed their attitude again and clung to me. However, at that time, the sound of the doorbell echoed with the voice of, I'm a policeman. Oh dear, it seems like your ride has arrived. Huh? Why? What did I do? Of course, you left your child alone for three days and enjoyed the trip. Austin, I'll cut off the relationship between parent and child today. Do your best. Wait a minute. 
I brushed off my son's hand, handed them over to the police, and left my son's house with the lawyer. After that, I was able to formally adopt William, and Isabella also said, I want to be with my brother and grandma. And the three of us started living together. I claimed $30,000 in compensation for William and the money that was embezzled from me for my son. Austin and his wife were soon released from the police, but they were fired from their company because of this incident, and they divorced after constant quarrels. Each of them may be living a lonely life, but both my grandchildren and I have no intention of seeing them again. William is enjoying drawing his favorite pictures with enthusiasm, and Isabella is playing around with more smiles and energy. I decided to keep working hard while enjoying the growth of my two grandchildren. How was this story? Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.